So fuck the colder weather Finally it's all gone Let's drink together Vibe all summer long Not for whatever I'm just trying to get the mood right Spark up blood and watch the smoke drift to the moon Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Learn PT. Today we're going to be covering the three systems of balance. Um, talking about a little bit how they coordinate, how they work, and how if we have a deficit in one, how we can train it, improve it, or use the other two to compensate for that deficit. So the first one we're going to talk about is the vestibular system. This is primarily the vestibular system which it attaches to our cochlear system. The vestibular system is a series of three semicircular canals that are filled with an endolymph fluid that has crystals within it. Those crystals run over hair projections into these semicircle canals and as those crystals run over those hair projections they give us an idea of which way that endolymph is traveling which tells us which way our head is moving through space. All of that input helps us to orient postural balance and spatial awareness. <clears throat> so you have three different canals, a lateral, a posterior, and a superior. The superior canal helps tell us about front and back movement. <clears throat> the posterior canal helps tell us about side to side movement. And then finally, the lateral canal tells us about rotation giving us an idea of, okay, my head is moving through space in these directions, the endolymph is traveling over those hairs with the crystals in it, and I need to know, okay, how do I control my postural stability as I'm shaking my head no, or as I'm moving my head this way, and how do I stay oriented to where I am in space even though my head is moving? Some things that affect the vestibular system would be um, benign paroxysmal <clears throat> positional vertigo, which is the most common um, form of vestibular deficit or infarct, Meniere's disease, and viral lab labyrinthitis. BPVV is typically in the posterior canal and is something where <clears throat> we have displacement of those crystals and our body is having a hard time telling where our head is in space and as we move it, um, we can get dizziness, nausea, and typical vertigo symptoms. Meniere's disease is an expansion of that endolymph, which puts pressure on this membrane and can cause, again, some vertigo-like symptoms, nausea, vomiting. Um, viral labyrinthitis is a inflammation of our vestibular nerve where we are having some kind of viral agent causing that inflammation, causing those symptoms. So that is the vestibular system. Typically we train that by <clears throat> working on moving your head as you do walking, as you do balance, and using that input from the vestibular system to improve your stability and improve your postural, postural balance and spatial awareness through taxing that system, moving the head as we're doing a balance. So you're getting input from that vestibular system, but you have to maintain your stability. The next one would be your somatosensory system, which interprets stimuli and senses joint position. So you have mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors are receptors that tell me, okay, I am picking something up. This is what it feels like. This is the pressure I'm applying to it. This is how heavy it is. And they send input <clears throat> to a nerve fiber along with proprioceptive or proprioception. Um, proprioception is sensing your joint in space. So if you are over a bent knee and you're in a deep squat, your proprioceptive feedback would be your joints and cells in your joints actually telling, hey, I'm in a bent knee and I am in a deep squat. How do I need to adjust my stability in my foot and ankle to maintain my balance while my knee joint is in this deep, deep flexion position? So both of these give some input that travels up a nerve fiber to your cerebral cortex, which then interprets that input and then sends signals back down the nerve fiber to tell your body and your joints how to find stability and <clears throat> how to maintain balance as we go through changes in joint position or carrying something or an alternate, um, an alternate terrain like compliant surfaces, those kind of things. <clears throat> so some things that would affect your somatosensory um, system would be neuropathy, uh, obviously a decreased sensation, a decreased ability to understand what kind of terrain you're on and interpret that stimuli because you have a lessened stimuli due to decreased sensation. And then some, uh, some central nervous system infarcts, TBI, stroke, and spinal cord injury that obviously affect your nerves and your cerebral cortex and their ability to interpret that stimuli and then communicate with your body. 
Finally, your visual system is um, visual input and spatial awareness. So obviously, I'm getting visual input every day. If I walk into my kitchen, I'm getting the visual input of oh, there's where my fridge is located, there's where my stove is located. I am understanding where those are in space in relation to me, and I am able to navigate around them without running into them. Obviously, if anybody has ever closed their eyes and tried to navigate their house, which they can do easily with their eyes open, they realize how much our visual input orients us to space, gives us some spatial awareness, and helps with our stability. So we have a retina, which receives light from the external environment, and those photoreceptors turn that light into an electrical signal which travels on our optic nerve and goes to our visual cortex which gives us that visual image that we have when we are looking around at things and allows us to interpret where we are in space and our proximal stability through our balance. Some things that would affect this would be retinopathy, blindness, and low light. So low light is something that's very, very important because that um, is something we can combat easily with night lights and that kind of thing because the less light that's getting into my eyes, the less clear of a picture I have and the worse spatial awareness I have. <clears throat> so all three of these, we went over some info and we have to train whether it's training balance with our eyes closed, training balance on a compliant surface, or training balance with head movements. Those kind of things are the things we have to make sure we're doing to ensure that we're taxing people's balance, we're improving people's balance, and we're using alternative systems if we have an infarct or deficit or pathology in one of these three systems. So if you guys want to see any interventions or anything like that for balance, please let me know. But I just wanted to cover the systems of balance so we have a better understanding of how these things are coordinating to make sure that we have stability, we move through space fluently, and we know where we are in space in relation to other things. Thank you guys so much for viewing.